So from Ephesians, let's read this together. It says, finally, oh, there we go. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so when the day come, the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything, to stand. This to me is a hopeful scripture, because we have the ability to lean into our creator, the creator of all of these things, and the victor, we get, remember, we get to see the end of the book. We get to see that the victor is there. Uh, and so we're gonna sing some songs today. We're gonna listen to God's word today. Uh, and we are going to focus on hope. So let's do that. Let's pray together and then we will start our first song. Father God, just thank you uh, as we stand in this place. God, as we uh, prepare to lift our voices to you, as we prepare to sing uh, these songs that have been written praising you, as we read scripture from your word, God, thank you that we have hope. No matter what the battle is, we have hope. God, we pray all of these things in your son Jesus' name, amen. You see my victory When all I see is a mountain You see a mountain move And as I walk through the shadow Your love surrounds me There's nothing to fear now For I am safe with you so when I fight, so when I fight, I'll fight on my knees with my hands lifted high. Oh God, the battle belongs to you. Every fear I lay at your feet, I'll sing through the night. Oh God, the battle belongs to you. And if you're for and if you are for me, who can be against me? For Jesus, there's nothing impossible for you. When all I see are the ashes, you see the beauty. God, you see the empty tomb. So when I fight, I'll fight on my knees with my hands lifted high. Oh God, the battle belongs to you. Every fear I lay at your feet, I'll sing through the night. Oh God, the battle belongs to you. An almighty fortress for us nothing can stand against the power of our god you shine in the shadows you win every battle nothing can stand against the power of our god you know mighty fortress you go before us nothing can stand against the power of our god you shine in the shadows you win Nothing can stand against the power of our God. So when I fight, I'll fight on my knees with my hands lifted high. Oh God, the battle belongs to you. Every fear I lay at your feet, I'll sing through the night. Oh God, the battle belongs to you. Oh God, the battle belongs to you.
your body and your blood shed for me This is how I find my battle Sing that again, church. It's a table that you've prepared for me. The presence of my enemies. It's your body and your blood shed for me. This is how I find my battle. I believe. I'm surrounded. Follow a man. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Amen. All right, we got a scripture we're going to read. Ready? Have I got their voices ready? From Psalm 63, read this with me. You, God, are my God. Earnestly I seek you. I thirst for you. My whole being longs for you. In a dry and parched land where there is no water. I have seen you in the sanctuary and beheld your power and your glory. Because your love is better than life, my lips will glorify you. I will praise you as long as I live, and in your name I will lift up my hands. This is my prayer. This is my prayer in the desert, when all that's 
within me feels dry This is my prayer in my hunger and need My God is the God who provides This is my prayer in the fire In weakness or trial or pain satisfied as with the richest of foods with singing lips my mouth will praise you on my bed I remember you I think of you through the watches of the night because you are my help I sing in the shadow of your wings I cling to you your right hand upholds me this is my prayer in the battle when triumph is still on I am a conqueror and co-heir with Christ, so firm on His promise I'll stand. I will bring praise, I will bring praise, no weapon formed against me shall remain. I will rejoice, I will declare, God is my victory and He is here. depths of the earth. They will be given over to the sword and become food for jackals. Read this out loud, church. But the king will rejoice in God, and all who swear by God will glory in him, while the mouths of liars will be silenced. This is my prayer in the harvest, when favor and providence flow. again the seed i've received i will sow have a seat everyone Good morning. As we come to this time of communion, um, I want to remind everyone that we have different stations, two up here in the front, one in the back, one up there. As, um, and as soon as I give a little bit of a talk and a brief prayer, then you can go ahead and go back and grab yours. Every time I have to do this, I stand up here and talk to you about myself. And I thought about, man, I'm boring. But really, what I wanted to do today is talk about you and actually bring about what does communion mean to you? And this is the time to think about that. We can use Corinthians where it says that communion, the purpose of that is to be able to acknowledge Christ's acts and what he did for us. And we remember that. And this is the time to remember that. But what does it really stand for to you? And that's something that I wanted you to think about today. So I'm gonna pray here in just a minute and I wanted you to be able to think about that. But if everyone would close your eyes and take a moment and just think about for yourself, what does that mean to you? Dear Heavenly Father, this is the best time of the week, the time in which we can come to you, we can worship you, we can think about you and know that the sacrifices that you made for us. 
Lord, we thank you so much for those, the giving of your son, the ability for us to be able to come here, for us to be able to do your will. Lord, we thank you so much for everything and all that you've done for us. For it's in your name we pray. Amen. Before you give up, my one scripture today comes from John 6, 53 through 58. Jesus said to them, very truly I tell you, unless you eat from the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is the real food, and my blood is the real drink. Thank you. Good morning, and welcome. Thanks for joining us online. Thanks for all of you joining us here. We're so happy you're here with us. If you don't know who I am, my name is Troy Leathers. I'm one of the elders here at Lake Christian Church. Um, if you would, open up your Bibles or your Bible app, whatever your preference is, to 1 Samuel chapter 30. I'll be reading from verses 1 through 19. Today, we're continuing our series, Hope is alive. We will learn that God doesn't waste any of the pain in our lives. He uses it. And what we learn about God from it helps prepare us for the future battles we will fight. And because of that, hope is alive. It's fair to say that life is a battlefield. That being said, here's what we need to remember. God has won the battle but we're still in a fight. Personal share, let me ask, have you ever had anything stolen or taken away from you? Made you angry, didn't it? Well, in middle school, I had my first really cool pair of tennis shoes. White leather Pumas. <laughs> had the gray suede Puma stripe. I had my fat boy shoelaces. And they were perfect, except I had one scuff mark on them. I was so angry at myself for that scuff mark. One day in gym class, everything was great. I came back to the gym, uh, gym room to change my clothes to get ready for the rest of my classes. I took my shoes off. I put them on the bench. I turned around to my locker to get my change of clothes. I turned back around. My shoes are gone. My shoes are gone. So it was like reading the paper left to right. I'm looking everywhere. Trying to find, where's my shoes at? And lo and behold, I found them. They were about right here on one of the school bullies' feet. And he saw me looking. So he steps up, spits on his finger, rubs my scuff mark on my shoe, and then says, how you like my new shoe? Without thinking twice, I grabbed my, my lunch bag, which had an apple in it, and I made applesauce over his head. <laughs> I got my shoes back. But I got in more trouble than the bully did for stealing them. So, fortunately, I'm no longer a child and I'm not dealing with physical fights. But I'm still involved in plenty of fights in life. And you are too. The fight I'm going to share with you today are fights we all endure. We know that God has won the battle but we're still in a fight. The Bible tells us we have an enemy, and he's a strategic enemy. John chapter 10, verse 10 says, the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I've come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. God does not want you to give up. He wants you to get in the fight and live for his purposes. Today, we're going to talk about a man of great courage. This man had a lot to teach us, and we're going to be inspired by the steps. We can follow to win our fights and overcome our battles in life. In 1 Samuel chapter 30, we learned about David before he became a king. David faced numerous discouragements and setbacks that hindered him from reaching his full potential. Despite his struggles, 
God remained with him and worked through him. David returned home after defeating Goliath. Remember the story of Goliath, Philistine giant? So David returns home, and the young ladies sing his praise. Saul had slay, slain his 10,000, but David, his 10,000s. Saul's jealousy grew. People loved David because of his victories. David had to run for his life. He ended up living in a cave. Against all odds, he managed to escape to the land of the Philistines, the mortal enemies of the Israelites, where the king took them in. This king gave David the town of Ziklag. When he and his men and his families all settled there, get this, David and his men are ready to join the Philistines in their upcoming battle against the Israelites, his own people. However, they are rejected and not trusted by the leaders of the Philistine army because they're Hebrews and they worship a different God. The Philistine king then advised David and his men, return to Ziklag. So David and his men head back to Ziklag, and we're about to read and find out what happens upon their return. I'm going to be reading out of the New King James Version today, starting with verses 1 through 4. Now it happened, when David and his men came to Ziklag on the third day, that the Amalekites had invaded the south, and Ziklag attacked Ziklag and burned it with fire, and had taken captive the women and those who were there, from small to great. They didn't kill anyone, but they carried them away and went their way. So David and his men came to the city, and there it was, burned with fire. And their wives and their sons and their daughters had all been taken captive. Then David and the people who were with him lifted up their voices and wept until they had no more power to weep. At this moment, David's facing a life battle. Have you ever wept to where you couldn't weep anymore? In life, there's going to be battles. What, what are you battling? It's unlikely anyone's going to leave here today and find that your house is burnt to the ground and that your family's been taken captive. But every week of life is going to present a battle. We have to fight with our faith because we live in a world that sin has entered. Yes, troubles come our way. The Bible doesn't promise life absent of trouble. It doesn't promise a life free of trials and tribulations. These trials and tribulations come in many forms. Today, there are people here, maybe dealing with anxiety, depression, grief. Some of you may be experiencing relational struggles with your marriage, with your children, other family members. Others may be grappling with addiction, job loss, financial stress or strain, a lack of hope for good health. The hope, peace, and joy that once existed for you may have seemed to disappear. So while you may not physically be in zigzag, you may be there spiritually, emotionally, and figuratively. We must learn how to fight in order to overcome life's battles. So how can we fight to win and overcome our battles? David had to be thinking, it can't get any worse. I've hit rock bottom. But then the floor drops out beneath him. It's the worst moment of David's life. Not only had he left the people of God, the land of Israel to join the ungodly Philistines, but they rejected them from fighting with them, and he's sending back to Ziklag. He then discovers the Amalekites have retaliated against him, and they've burnt the town and taken the families captive. Let's see what happens next, starting with verse 6 and reading through verse 8. Now David wasn't a little distressed. David was greatly distressed. For the people spoke of stoning him, because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for their sons and daughters. But David strengthened himself, and the Lord is God. Then David said, 
to Abathar, the priest, Ahimelech's son. Please bring the ephod here to me. And Abathar brought the ephod to David. So David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered, Pursue, for you shall surely overtake them, and without fail, recover all. Let me offer a word of prayer. Lord, we thank you for every person here today, everyone who can join us. Lord, we thank you for your word. Lord, whether people are in a zigzag moment now, leaving a zigzag moment, or about to enter a zigzag moment, you speak to their heart in a unique and special way, Lord. Let them sense your presence and your strength as they face their struggle or their battle. Lord, we know that your word is sharper than a two-edged sword. We welcome it, Lord. We want your word. Lord, we just ask that we follow your word and that we're more like you in each and every day in all we say. In your precious name we pray, amen. That last line in verse 8, where the Lord answered him and said, pursue, overtake them, and recover all. It's powerful. How David responds to this event in life is great encouragement to you, no matter where you're at, what you're going through. It's the most difficult moment Dave, David provides us with four steps. How we can win our battles and recover all. I'm going to ask everybody to put up one finger. This is going to be our first step. All right. First step is to get past bitterness. To win your battle, you must get past bitterness. In a challenging moment, David could have been bitter at those people around him. He was surrounded by a group of misfits, outcasts from society. They had joined him. They were not individuals anybody wanted to be around. But David had turned them into a winning team. They had become warriors winning battle after battle. At this very moment, something went wrong, and they become angry at David. Instead of them saying to David, you lead, you're in charge, we'll continue to follow, they want to kill David. David easily could have said, what are you talking about? I lost my family, I lost my children, I lost my wives. I'm right here with you. Why are you blaming me for this? David could have been bitter toward the people, but he also could have been bitter toward God. He could have thought to himself, God, I was anointed to be the next king, and since then my whole life has fallen apart. I thought you gave me a promise. You're not holding up your end of the deal. I don't have hope, joy, or peace that I should. I don't have the life I should. Everything has been taken away from me. Listen, bitterness will stop you every time from walking for the purposes of God. You cannot walk forward if you're tied to your past. The Bible says that bitterness is a root. I like how this is presented in the NIV version of Hebrews chapter 12, verse 15, which says, See to it that no one falls short of the grace of God, and that no bitter root grows up to cause trouble and defile Many. Bitterness will not only stop you from moving forward for God's purposes, but it will spread to other people, leaving you to struggle to recover your peace and your strength through God. There is bitterness in Ziklag. Now, I don't know what's happened to your past. I don't know if you're divorced, got fired, lost your business, or you're bankrupt. I don't know who wronged you or falsely accused you. I don't know when or why you, why you may have become brokenhearted. Maybe you grew up in a broken home. Maybe you've been abused. So I don't know what's happened in your past. But here's what I do know. If you're bitter, you'll never recover fully for God's purposes. If you find yourself in that place right now, I pray that you need to pray to God to uproot that bitterness from your heart so you can move forward in life. All right, let's all hold up two fingers. The next step, we need to get with God. Get with God. 
Let's look back to the end of verse 6 through verse 8. But David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. Then David said to Abathar, the priest, Ahimelech's son, please bring the ephod here to me. And Abathar brought the ephod to David. So David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue, for you shall surely overtake them, and without fail, recover all. David knew that he needed to get with God. God was always there, but David was not relying on him. David understood that in his weakest moment, he needed to rely on the strength of God. After losing everything, he realized, I can't do this on my own. Does that sound familiar? I don't know what you're battling right now. Maybe you're feeling weak. Maybe you're struggling. If so, it's time to strengthen yourself in God. God will give you the strength you need and the courage to deal with whatever you're facing. David then asked for the ephod. An ephod is mentioned in 1 Samuel, but what exactly is it? The ephod was worn like an apron by the priest to prevent sacrificial blood from splashing on their clothing. Most likely, the ephod had attached to it the breastplate of judgment mentioned in the book of Exodus. The breastplate contained a pouch with two stones, main, or known as the Urim and the Thummim. In the Old Testament, during the time of David, it was commanded by God to follow this process in order to seek his word. Thankfully for us, Old Testament priesthood is in the past. And that's because of Jesus' great sacrifice on the cross for each and every one of us. We have the freedom and the relationship with God to seek his word freely today. Amen? Amen. You see, David was seeking God's guidance on whether he should fight or not. He realized that he needed to rely completely on God for direction, and he received his answer. Pursue, for you shall surely overtake them, and without fail, recover all. Our small group recently completed this study by Craig Rochelle, Winning the War in Your Mind. There's one particular part I want to share with you. It says, when you practice God's presence, always mindful that he's near, then you will pray. And when you pray, it leads to praise. Praising God changes your perspective. Friends, God shouldn't be an afterthought. In your moment of heartache and pain, you need to pray to him first and trust he'll answer. How does he answer? How are we able to hear from him? The primary way that God communicates through to us is his word. Although we often want the dramatic sign. We want the burning bush, the lightning bolt, earthquake, just to name a few. But he speaks to us daily through the Bible as we read it. In Romans chapter 8, verse 16, it says, The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. God can speak to you in that place inside of you. He's connected with you and give you that internal, internal peace in a crazy circumstance. It's important to remember that when he speaks, it's always going to align with his word. He's never going to say something that contradicts his word. He also communicates with you through the community of believers, the church. He surrounds you with people who pray for you, who love you, who support you, who lift you up. This brings us to our third step of winning our battles. All right, are ready? What are the steps so far? One, we're going with one. Get past bitterness. Two, get with God. And number three, I'm about to introduce. Get partners. Get partners in your life to help you win your battles and recover all. So David and his men set out to find the Amalekites, and they encounter a stranger in the field. Let's examine how this event unfolded in, less, in, in verses 11 through 15. It says, Then they found an Egyptian 
in the field. And they brought him to David. And they gave him bread and he ate. And they let him drink water. And he gave him a piece of a cake of figs and two clusters of raisins. So when he had eaten, his strength came back to him. For he had, for he had eaten no bread nor drunk water for three days and three nights. Then David said to him, to whom do you belong and where are you from? And he said, I'm a young man from Egypt, servant of an Amalekite. My master left me behind because three days ago I fell sick. We made an invasion of the southern area of the Carthites in the territory which belongs to Judah and of the southern area of Caleb. And we burned Ziklag with fire. And David said to him, can you take me to this troop? So he said, swear to me by God that you will neither kill me nor deliver me into the hands of my master. And I will take you down to this troop. Now, as David begins his journey, he's trying to recover all and fulfill God's word to him. Looking back to verses 9 and 10, it says, so David went. He and the 600 men who were there with him and came to the brook Bazor, where those stayed who were left behind. But David pursued, he and 400 men, for 200 stayed behind, who were weary, who were so weary that they could not cross the brook Bazor. David realizes he's down to 400 men. He realizes the Amalekites have a much larger group. However, he has the strength and the word of God. There's nothing that's going to stop David. God then aligns him with this partner, this random Egyptian guy in the field, who's going to help David accomplish this incredible task at hand. In life, having partners is essential to win battles and recover all. This is why we do small groups. You need people in your life sitting in a circle, reading the Bible together. People you can study, people you can grow with, people you can connect to at a relational level. You need people doing life with you that you can walk in accountability with. Yes, God aligns people to give you wisdom and provides people for whatever battles and struggles you may have. You may need a marriage counselor. You may need help with your finances. You may need a doctor for medical or mental needs. Listen, it's okay not to be okay. But you need to get with God so he can align you with somebody who can share wisdom and help you overcome your battles. Now let's recap our steps to win our battles and recover all. One, get past bitterness. Two, get with God. Three, get partners. And now four. All right, let's put up four fingers. Never mind, let's make a fist. Because we got to get in the fight. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at verse 16, reading through 17. Now let's see what happens. Remember, this was David's Egyptian partner who led him to this Amalekite raiding party. And when he brought them down, there they were, spread out all over the land, eating and drinking and dancing because of all the great spoil which they had taken from the land of the Philistines and the land of Judah. Then David attacked them from twilight until the evening of the next day. Not a man of them escaped, except 400 young men who rode on camels and fled. Did you catch verse 17? David attacked. Imagine this scenario. David's looking down in this valley. These, the enemies are celebrating. He knows his family is being held captive. Makes him angry, right? Rightfully so. You know, it's okay to get angry at the real enemy in your life. Not your spouse, not your children, not your friends, maybe not even your boss, but it's Satan. In this moment, it's interesting to note, the text doesn't mention David strategizing or planning with his men before the attack. This is not how I pictured it, to be honest, right? I'm imagining this is the main event. This is the big fight. 
I can hear the guy standing in the ring. Let's get ready to rumble. <laughs> None of that. No, it was simple. It says David attacked. He's had enough. He's got God on his side. He decided to deal with a situation right now. Let's finish reading through this, starting at verse 17 through 19. Then David attacked them from twilight until the evening of the next day. Not a man of them escaped, except 400 men and rode on camels and fled. So David recovered all that the Amalekites had carried away. And David rescued his two wives. And nothing of theirs was lacking, either small or great, sons or daughters, spoil or anything in which they had taken from them. David recovered all. Say it with me. David recovered all. Allow me to ask, are you fighting to win and recover all? In your life, what have you stopped trying to recover? Was there a time when you would fight for your marriage, you got bitter and you stopped moving forward? Was there a time you were fighting for your kids and praying for their salvation? Maybe you were praying against every strategy and scheme the enemy had, but at some point you just gave up. Where did you weep until you couldn't weep anymore? Did you give up or encourage yourself in the Lord? Listen to me, if that's you, it's time to get in the fight. We've all been to Ziklag, and if you haven't been, guess what? You're gonna get there. It's normal. Life has difficult moments in which you will be reminded. And remember, God has won the battle, but you're still in a fight. And those men, moments of life, don't give up. God is with you. Go to him, hear him say, pursue, overtake, recover all. Right now, you might find yourself in a zigzag moment. Let me ask, are you in a relationship with God? If you're not, we'd love to talk to you, and tell you what that's all about. You can talk to me, one of the other elders, one of our pastors. Remember, regardless of the size of your life's difficulties, they pale in comparison to the strength of our God. The same God that gave David victory can give you victory now. Hope is alive. Have you been walking away from God, doing things on your own strength? And you need to recover your faith and relationship with God? Today is the day. Strengthen yourself through him. See a victory because your battles belong to the Lord. Stand with us as we continue to sing about that hope uh, that God has conquered those victories and he has given us the promise of recovering all. You can keep doing that while we sing, okay? Everybody go like this.
that in all things God works for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. God, thank you for the promise of your love. God, thank you for it being acted out over and over again in Scripture, but most importantly, God, that your love through your Son was acted out on the cross and in his victory over death. God, thank you for the offer of salvation that we can grasp a hold of. And God, as we leave, I just ask that if there is anyone here questioning or, or doesn't understand, God, give them the courage to speak to one of us in the lobby. God, give them the, the peace to have that conversation. God, give, uh, give us the ability as believers to reflect your love to the people around us and the people that we interact with on a daily basis. God, thank you for your son. I thank you that your love never fails. We pray all of these things in Jesus' name, amen. Have a great week, everyone. Thank you.